What's that? Who there? Whoa. What's one other idea outside of fitness um, that really excites you right now? And maybe you didn't spend a lot of thought thinking about it, but it's come across your, your head in the last three to six months that if you had, if future was dead and you had to start another business or at least start thinking about it, it would be this. Okay. Interesting. I have three ideas or like little sparks that come to mind. Very random. And then you can, let you can, let's choose your own adventure. Um, so the first is what I might call cameo for business. Do you know cameo? They'll connect with celebrities to, you know, the skill of a celebrity is being interesting. And so you can connect with lots of celebrities who are interesting. Um, and shout out to my, my guys at, uh, Kleiner Perkins, who I think are investors there. So that's how I discovered the company It's a cool, interesting company. But the idea of cameo for business, actually, I think the founder of House, the um, the uh, spirits company, Helena, tweeted like, you know, what the world needs is actually a service where you can connect individuals with like people who are further along in their path to ask very pointed questions and then get two minutes on a video call to just talk it out or five minutes, whatever, end of call. And I find that you know, absolutely interesting. I think there's a lack of equity in in the startup world um, in terms of access to information. And most problems have been seen by somebody. So, you know, you can fast forward a lot of progress. So that's an interesting one. Uh, I'll give you two more. Um, future of retail, um, you know, with you know, everything that's happened in the last year, which we should take into account, there I think is this opportunity to create smaller footprint retail and, and higher density trafficked, you know, more coveted areas. So imagine restaurants that serve a smaller group of people or a gym that doesn't have to be this big box on the edge of town, but actually can be smaller, more intimate. And by virtue of having to serve one person at a time can actually know you have context um, and it's smaller cost of retail, therefore can be in a more coveted area. So that's small retail is kind of interesting. Um, and then the third one, um, what was I thinking about for the third one? Um, oh yeah. So I think there's this opportunity in sports. I don't know if you're a sports fan at all, but I think the way that sports is broadcast to audiences is behind the times. It's very, um, uh, high level, like this person scored a touchdown or not. And I think the sports world is ready for more, um, more detail and analysis and, you know, what are the core, you could watch the NBA your entire life and not understand what the nuances of a back screen or a drag screen or like all of these things that are happening in front of your eyes, but you're not really taught them in bits and pieces. So I think there's room in the world of sports to get more technical with an audience and actually teach them more rules of the game, more nuance. Um, and I think there's actually a thirst for it. So those are three ideas. I don't know if you want to pull the thread on any of them. Yeah, I could go down all those. So the, let's pick the first one, but comments on the second set two and three. So number three is really interesting. It's kind of like those AWS commercials, like Christian McCaffrey, he's going in for a touchdown and they're like, they're overlaying the the kind of like AR statistics. It's kind of like that, but more in real time with with more like context, like the way Tony Romo kind of, he the way he commentates, yep. he kind of gives yep. you some of that deep insight. I gives love that. that. Yep. Yeah, so that's great. Two, the re future of retail, I think is, that's probably gonna happen quickest, like almost out of out of the pandemic, I think, stores are already forced to rethink that. And so it's really interesting to think about, you know, restaurants versus stores versus all these other retail footprints. And like when that square footage shrinks, how do they then offset that with like an elevated customer experience? So I, I totally agree. Let's, let's pull number one though, because I think this idea, it kind of correlates well with what you're doing at Future, which is you're giving relevant expertise to someone who needs it. You guys are building a more authentic, long lasting connection in fitness. And the idea in theory would be less long lasting, more quick hit, but like you can really tap into someone that you couldn't before. I'm curious, like in my mind, the biggest bottleneck there is, can you get the more, the more senior person or the person who's giving the advice? How yeah. do you get them to interrupt their day and like give okay. five minutes? This is such a great question. Cause that's where this whole thing falls down. Right? So think about playing this out and creating cameo for business or whatever you want to call it. Um, and what you're going to end up with is a bunch of emerging quote thought leaders who are trying to make this their platform. They're going to answer everyone's question. They're always available. This is all they do. And you're actually, it's an adverse selection. You're not getting the people who are successful. So one, yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't have a good answer for this, but how do you, how do you actually incentivize 
people who are highly, highly successful or have seen a lot of problems entangled with them to want to do this. And one of the thoughts that started to kick around in my head was, what if you actually severely limited the amount of answers you could provide? You like you weren't even not only expected, but the only the maximum you can do is one answer a month. Now, what you're doing is you're actually preventing a lot of people from who are uh, who want to make this their platform from rushing in and just like trying to answer a bunch of random questions. Um, so you're not like um, uh, you're 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 preventing some of that like, you're uh, like limiting your supply almost. Yeah, and you want to you want to supply um, you want to um, keep the quality high. And by reducing the amount that is even allowed, I think you are broadcasting that the expectation is low and the time, you know, the time spent is low. And I think the right person has to start this, right? The right person has to, to actually, I think my, my concept is it probably has to start within one venture fund and their portfolio. So I, as someone who's successful, I know I'm going to go, I'm going to have questions in and out. Like if I'm a high potential person, I can still give value out. And you're only allowed to answer one thing a month or we're only going to hit you up for one thing a month. It's five minutes of your time. And can, come on, can you be too busy for that? Um, but then as you as you kind of build, start from like a trusted like circle, then I think you can grow and grow and grow and introduce more people who are who are making an ask. But the time, um, the time hasn't grown in terms of um, how much I have to dedicate. It's just one one answer a month. Um, so I think that might be interesting. You might get a, a lopsided number of questions to number of answers, but you might be able to actually make this something that goes 360. You could also take answers and allow them to be, um, I don't know, recorded and, and um, persist perhaps. Uh, but at any given time, there's a founder who's dealing with fulfillment challenges and someone who knows this backwards and forwards. And so there's like this real intrigue to, to trying to figure out. What about you? What are your, what are your concepts of how do you preserve the supply side of this? Yeah, so I have a few ideas on this. So my, my wheels are turning. So I, I thought someone who's done this kind of well is like Gary Vee in that he allows access to random people who call in. And and although it's not hyper specific, it's not, it's not specific enough. Like he's answering everyone's question, not just the ones that are perfect fits for him. But what I think would be cool is if you made a platform, it was subscription-based. So all of the people asking questions would have to pay five, 10 bucks a month. And like you mentioned, each person whose supply side would get one question to answer. You'd have some kind of moderation layer to make sure that the question they got was like perfectly matched with what their expertise was. Easy to then, do. Right? Yeah. yeah, easy to do. Then you'd answer, they'd answer that question, you'd film it, and you'd put it on this platform for anyone who pays a subscription to watch. At the end of the month, you would look at, okay, what were the most watched clips? And you'd A, distribute some of the earnings back that way so that there was some financial upside. But yeah. B, you would distribute more access to other answers. So like if I had the most relevant and most successful answer, I would earn more ability to answer other people's questions next month. So maybe instead of one, it's three or five. And that way you can screen for quality, but people who who want to give more advice than just one, it enables them to do that. So let me play devil's advocate. So when when we broadcast and record, which I even suggested earlier, it doesn't allow you to get into the the real nitty gritty to name names and talk about the actual problem you're having. Imagine if I got a five minute FaceTime with you and you had context for my question. Let's just say I'm a young entrepreneur and I'm having co-founder issue, right? And be like, here are all the things that are going wrong with this particular person. If this is going out to the world, we're definitely not having that. We're having some couched version of that conversation, right? And I think one of the, the, the brilliant ideas here is if it's front facing, it happens and it goes away, we just get into it. And this is actually what, um, what already happens for people who have um, connections, right? People who have connections, they call the CMO of some company and talk about their marketing thing. And like, I'm I'm running into some issue. Here's what we tried. Here's how much we're spending per customer and this, that, and the other, like all these facts, I don't want to be public because I'm probably having a problem <laughs> with them. And um, and like, like walk me through how you would tackle this. And so I think like that, that you know, um, some of that might be an issue. And then on the flip, I'm not sure that you could make enough money as an answer for it to be material. So it's almost like, you know, how are you going to get the founders of Instagram to want to spend, you know, five minutes a month if you're going to give them six bucks back? It's just, it's almost insulting, right? Um, so, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, I think they, they might do it for, creating equity and helping people. It's five minutes a month. I mean, there's not a lot of work there. Not that I'm trying to sign up Mike or Kevin for any, any work here. Um, but, uh, 
but you know, they're obviously busy. I think they would enjoy problem solving. So it's an interesting idea. What that model looks like is, is intriguing. And if you even allow them to price their time, I'm not sure that that's what their motivation is going to be. They're running a business. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Right. That, that it can't be, I, I think someone's tried that, like the expert price their time for five minute call, 10 minute call. And it, it didn't work because yeah. that, that wasn't what drove those people. They already have an, many millions. <laughs> the so here we are not gonna move the needle. running up against a pretty fundamental question of how do you actually build? And I think just trust, I think the trust and quality, those, those matter in communities. Yeah. It's two problems are one. It's real. I feel like it'd be really hard to scale if, if it was just a one-on-one conversation that was private and that value was lost or mm-hmm. not lost, but those people had it, no one else saw it. Yep. It'd be very hard to scale that big because you need so many answers, so many, so many people asking questions. Uh, and then the other thing is, I guess, yeah. How do you keep it? How do you keep it relevant? How do you keep those experts interested enough? What if uh, question a- asker and answer talk for five minutes or X minutes, whatever, and then you require the person who asked to write their cliff notes on what they learned? So they'll scrub out. They'll they will take out the um, the the stuff they don't want to share publicly. Um, if that stuff becomes publicly broadcast and attached to the asker and answerer in some way, uh, there's pressure to do it well. Um, maybe that's a solve. And you actually thrust the work onto that person to say, what did you learn in like 280 words or for maybe 500 words or less? Um, and it's like, we talked about fulfillment and like, these are the companies we want to look at. And it's a very tactical question. I need to fulfill sending genes. These are the three companies that seem to be the best. That was what I learned. That, or it might be, here's how to approach that problem. And here's what I learned. Maybe that's interesting. I like that. The, the only other thing that I'd be concerned with, do you feel like, the, so the context to a lot of these situations is key. And do you think in, in just five minutes as an asker, you could give enough context to the answer and then get your question out? Or, or would there be too many situations where it really requires like a 15 minute lead up? I guess you're not being concise enough. It requires a 15 minute lead up. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. But if, if we do run with this concept of limiting it to once a month, 15 minutes is easy. You know, 15 minutes once a month is easy. Like, I think what's harder is if I don't know how often I'm going to be hit up, then, you know, I definitely can't be um, making arbitrary amounts of time and it's got to be two minutes or something. So I think it could be, it could be longer and it just has to be less frequent. I think that there's like that basic, that basic math of you have to easy enough to make that time. And I think a lot of people who are, who have success are already accustomed to making time for other people. At least in, in the technology world, I see this. There's not a lot of guarded secrets. There's a lot of people who are very generous with their time. Um, they only get asked questions from a small universe of people who somehow have access. And so if you could repurpose one of those slots a month that they're already spending with a bunch of people and actually make it for higher order, of helping people at a broader scale, 